and, and he would say, this business is not for the faint hearted. If you cannot handle risk, if you cannot have, be a person of courage and be willing to take risks, um, you're, you're not going to make it in this business. And yes, he was amazing. He's still amazing, but he's in Tennessee now. Um, but you know, it is. This, this business is not for the faint hearted and the, the wimps. And he used it. This is not for wimps. This business is not for wimps. So I agree with him 100%. Yes, I agree with him too. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I've, I've kept that mindset around my life now for 33, it'll be 34 years in June that I've been in this business and still love it. it it's cuckoo wild. And we go with it. You know, you have to have a spirit of, you know, wanting to do whatever it takes and, you know, slow down and read and take care of people. Um, I'm currently writing a book um, and, and authoring a new book and curriculum just on the full execution of contracts and disclosures and really knowing it and dissecting it because the more confidence you have, in being able to explain to people, well, you're, you're going to be able to do anything because number one, if they can't trust you to do that, how can they trust you to sell their house? How can they trust you to negotiate for them? How can they trust you when they write offer after offer after offer? And, you know, maybe the market's just not allowing them to get their offers accepted, but if they're not taking your advice, right, it's because we don't know how to say things in a way that gives them this trust about these are contracts these are documents that you need to understand and i'm not an attorney full disclosure but i'm fully trained in being able to execute and explain this to you in detail so you can make a great decision and that is the craziness of this business where we have to stop and read and take the time to educate ourselves so that we can bring layman's terms to people they they need it you know Lack of a better term, I don't mean in disrespect, and we need to dumb it down, if you know what I mean. Like bring it down to a level that they don't do this every day. So anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Good morning, Peggy. Uh, we started talking about um, risk takers that we are in this business and how we have to be pretty, pretty um, non-wimpy, if you will, to be a real estate broker and professional. Definitely, definitely. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, we're not, we're not wimpy people at all, at all. Well, today, um, I, if anything, we're in a time that um, I call five is alive. And what five is alive means for me and has for over 25 years is that there's a saying that says we do things from A to Z. And in business for me, we do things as realtors from A to A. And it's April to August. We do great things between A to A. And five is alive just simply means that these are some of the best five months of the year cyclically in this business. They really are. Many things happen. Inventory just comes about. People start making relocation decisions, decisions for uh, changing, you know, uh, you know, where they're going to live maybe from one state to another or wherever that may be because of schools and for their children. So things happen between April and August as far as decision making. And spring happens. I don't know what it is, but there's just something in the air. So five is alive. And with that being said, we need to be in this frame of mind always that our inventory is what we're focused on. When we're focused on inventory, it means that we have something to sell. When, when you go to a hamburger stand, when you go get a hamburger, if all they have is all these great condiments, <laughs> you know, if you go to a place called Five Guys, anybody know where Five Guys is? I think Five Guys is pretty much uh, in the United States. You can choose to have a hamburger the way you want. I mean, you can have it with, you know, A1 sauce. You can have it with... Um, you know, certain kinds of pickles or you know what I'm talking about. But if they have no meat, then what's the point, right? So I'm, I'm there for the meat. I'm there for a good piece of, of, of steak, if you will, good burger. And then all the other condiments can come on that I want. In our business, we need listings. That's the meat. 
And without that inventory, we can have all the bells and whistles and all the tools and all these really great marketing things. And I get that. It's also very important, but we need the inventory. And so we need to work on how we present to people so that they can say, yes, I'm going to give you this property to sell because I trust that you have all these great condiments. I trust that you have a great marketing plan, but I also trust that you know how to bring me buyers. A seller hires a seller's agent, listing agent, because they know how to bring buyers and they know how to negotiate. When we are only trusting a buyer's agent to bring buyers, shame on us. We can't just sit and wait for the multiple listing service in whatever state you work in to sell it for you. And if that's how you work, I don't want you to work that way anymore because that's a shame. There needs to be a process. There needs to be a plan when the market shifts and we get into this time frame of they're not selling in a day anymore. They're not selling in two weeks anymore. They're selling in 45 days. You get me? They're selling in 60 days. I have listings right now that are over 40 days on the market. And once I get to 45 days, what's the new plan? In fact, I just had a conversation with my seller this weekend. And I said, as soon as we hit the 45 day mark, here's the new plan. And I could sense that they appreciated it. And they went, oh, you have a plan? You mean you're going to do something different than you did beforehand? I said, we've gotten um, showings. We have received an offer. It just wasn't the right offer for you. And we've had good traffic. But we need to do something other than just assuming that we always have to reduce people's prices. If their price needs to be reduced, you reduce it. You consult them. If it's incorrect, you bring that to the table. But that's not my point. My point is, is that you shouldn't always have to go for that answer. You have to just also have, what is your plan? So reducing the price, oh, that's great. You can just keep reducing it and reducing it and reducing it. And then that just makes it look bad. Makes it look like you really just didn't even know how to market it in the first place with the right price. And I do know that sometimes we will take a listing to appease a seller with an agreement that they're going to come down in two weeks and then they're going to come down in another 30 days. And you can put that in your listing agreement so that they can agree with you. So I'm all for that. But today, and what I want to share with you in listing presentations that rock is that you're going in with confidence to sit in front of a seller and share with them that this is how you work and that you have great conversations and that you have order and structure to your actual meeting. Um, I believe that many times, I think in this business, as we were talking earlier about how you've got to be a risk taker, you have to be somebody with a lot of courage uh, to do this business, but you have to be somebody who is willing and patient to take the time to do things correctly. And even to present your brand in a way in a listing presentation that rocks, that you have a system and an order to your presentation. Otherwise, if you're not taught to do a good listing presentation, you're there for too long. I mean, you're in their house. How many of you, and I can agree to be doing this back when I was a little, little scrub and didn't know what I was doing and I kept getting training. You're there for two hours and you don't walk away with a listing. So you, you, it's not about being there for a long time. Yes, you're establishing rapport. And yes, perhaps they invite you to have appetizers and dinner because now you've <laughs> invaded their time and space. And now you've gone over into an hour and 45 minutes and they want you to sign and you're signing documents and they're feeding you. Okay, I've been there too. I'm talking about not having the structure for your listing presentation. Getting to a point where you're 45 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes, talking your butt off. You know what I'm talking about. Selling yourself and selling yourself and selling yourself and trying to get them to say yes and dealing with objections and answering the objections and going over things and they're not getting it and you see that you're missing it and they're not in line with you. And then you're at the end and they're not signing. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, 
oh, we're going to think about it. Um, you know, we don't, we don't ever make decisions on the fly. You know, we sleep on it. We pray about it. They all have their, their reasons. And you're thinking I'm locking out when you're listing. Dang it. So there is something that can be done and it's called having a great listing presentation and knowing what that structure is. Okay. Everybody on the same page with me. So that's my beginning and I'm going to share some slides with you and we're going to get started. Uh, let me get, let me get this up and running. All right. You guys all good today? Pretty good. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Share. Let's see. All right, I am trusting that you guys can see where it says listing presentations that rock. And that is my hope. Somebody give me a thumbs up that you can. Hi, Gina. Good morning. Aloha. Good morning. Aloha. Good morning. Okay, so here we go. All good. Listing presentations that rock. Now, I've been teaching. Uh, a variety of different ways. You can all do a different way of doing listening presentations. There's tons of ways, right? The point is have a way and have a structure, right? All right. So we're first going to start out with your client interview and your consultation. What is the agenda? You have an agenda. You're coming to a meeting. They have an expectation. You need to lay out the expectation. Many people lay it out ahead of time with what we call a pre-listing package to help people understand what we're coming for, okay? But your agenda should be that you are interviewing their motivation, what their cooperation is going to be, and their needs. You are interviewing them. Just as much as they're interviewing you, you're interviewing whether or not you want to work with them and how they're gonna cooperate with you if you say, I want this listing. Sometimes everybody goes, I just take every listing that's out there, MJ, I need inventory, I need inventory. I've walked away from listings that I know are gonna be more of a challenge for me than, than my own sanity, okay? Anybody be there, ever been there? Sometimes it's just not for you and you need to be um, a strong, professional and business person to be able to know when to walk away at any time. So you're interviewing their motivation, their cooperation, their needs. Are you prepared to list your home tonight? Is a great question. I have some questionnaires and agendas I'm going to be giving you as far as some resources to help you, but we're going to go through this together. Okay. Are you prepared to list your home tonight? That's the agenda. Are they, do they want to list because you're ready to work, right? You're ready to work if they're ready to list. So that's your agenda. I'm there to interview. Yes, you're building rapport. So in your building rapport, you've got to be very um, strategic with that. And there's a the question here, I'm going to go through that with you. But if you spend too much time talking, you're not going to get to your agenda, right? You've got to get to the point. You've got to maintain control. If you don't maintain control, it gets off into a tangent. Everybody go down a rabbit hole at a listing presentation. You're going, this is not where I'm going. How do I get them back to where I need them to be? It's already half an hour. And they're telling me they only have 20 more minutes. So maintain your control. Where are you going to set the stage for your presentation? When you get there, you're going to have to assess where you're going to have the least distractions, where you're going to be able to present. Are you presenting in the format of just giving them something and they're going through it with you. Are you up to speed digitally? So I'll give you an example of how I present. So I have my computer, just like I have my laptop in front of me now. And then I actually have a small screen and I turn the screen and they're looking at the screen as I'm sharing my presentation with them. They're watching it and I'm watching their expressions. They're looking at it and it's like a little mini TV. I bring that up, I set it up, and now it's digital, okay? We're in the 21st century, you guys. We should be doing things a lot more innovative, okay? So I'm setting the stage. Where are we going to be able to present? I have something to show you, but we're going to have the least distractions. And you want to let them know how long it's going to take. 
So we are going to be together at least for a minimum of 45 minutes as I present to you how I work, uh, what is happening in the local marketplace, and we talk about the, the suggested list price that I may have for your home, okay? Um, so it's going to take about 45 minutes. Then at that point, you can show me your home. Now, I know some people are going to say, I like to see their home first. Okay. Uh, let me tell you, I'm not a fan of that. What happens is, unless you're prepared for a long drawn out conversation of all the details, you are moving into your time of 30 to 45 minutes that, that you need, especially if somebody's a talker and a chatty Kathy. So you've got to be very mindful if you are going to have them show you ahead of time of what it is that you want them to show you and nothing else. Because if not, it'll turn out long. Anybody been there before? Oh my gosh, we're 25 minutes into this and I haven't even started. And now I'm already hear hearing the objections and now they're already asking me to give them advice. What do you think I should do here? You think we should stage it? Do you think we and, and now you haven't even hired me yet and you already want me to tell you how to do this. So although I can agree with you to disagree that some people feel that that's the way to do it. I'm not saying don't do it that way. If that's your style, just manage and maintain control of your time, okay? You wanna defer objections. So asking great questions about how about handling and handling the objection is important. When you ask great questions, I am that master questioner, okay? You wanna be the master questioner. You're handling an objection. You're handling it. So you're going to take care of it you're going to diffuse it and be done with it, okay? So we defer the objection. And as you're building rapport, you're doing this. You're also gonna set the expectation. You're gonna give them options. Establishing that 45 minute time or however long it's gonna take and what's expected on the outcome of the meeting. I will be asking you if you're ready to list your home tonight. Why are we going to skirt around asking that. Remember we talked about in the beginning, this is for the risk taker. This is not for the faint hearted. You can't be wimpy to ask the questions that you need to ask. You're there for the listing. Be honest about it, right? So are you prepared to list your home tonight? That's, that's the agenda, okay? Give them options. What are the options? You know, you may agree uh, to list with me tonight. You may agree and come to the conclusion that maybe it's not the right time for you to list. You may agree and we may come to the conclusion that I'm not the realtor for you. But either way, um, we're going to come to an agreement tonight on one of those options. Give them the options to say no. Give them the options to say yes. Because it sets everybody to a place of, okay, now, now I know that if I don't want to work with her and I don't want to work with him, I can say no. And they're not going to get butthurt about it. OK, it, it, it takes it takes a good leather back for you to be able to go in there with that confidence to say, I'm OK, we're going to agree to work together or not. And I'm here to show with you, share with you how I work. Now, the agenda, having a plan, the agenda of the meeting with and for your client. You want to review a little bit of the agenda. It's, it's almost like when you go to a class and you're going to be there for, let's say, four hours to learn something. Well, what's the syllabus? What's the objective? Why am I here, right? How long is it gonna take? When's my break? <laughs> when do I get a 10 minute break? When do I get to make phone calls? When's lunch? Same thing. So review that with them. Share the time it's gonna take to fully present and what you're gonna be covering and explaining their options. That's your agenda. If you don't know what that is right now, you need to establish that. And I'm gonna give you a couple of things to, to help you with that, okay? So if that's you right now, where you're saying, MJ, I'm with you, uh, I agree with you, and I realize that I have my way of working at it, but I do need to have my bullet points of my agenda. I'm going to establish that now. I'm gonna start working on that and I'm, I'm here with you. I wanna see what you've got to say and what you've got to share, but I need to know what that is. You need to be able to review it with your people. Secondly, you're going to go over a questionnaire with them. This is where consultation begins. You are going to stay in curiosity to find out what's going on with them, clarifying what their goals are. What are their goals? Moving quickly, not moving quickly. I'm really only here to find out where the market is today. I don't know whether I'm gonna sell in the summer, whether I'm gonna sell in the fall. Have a really good candid conversation with the prospect. 
They're not your client yet. They're a customer. They're shopping you, you're shopping them. So let's clarify and get into curiosity. Discuss their concerns. Discuss any challenges that they have. What are you concerned about if you were to sell it tomorrow? What are you concerned about in selling it in the fall? What are your challenges? Any obstacles in the way that could keep you from getting your home sold at the pr highest price possible? Have those discussions with them. Now comes the consultation, right? We're consulting. How long is it going to take you to do this? 10 minutes? 15 minutes? Depends. But if you maintain control, it's almost like because I've been teaching for so many years, and some of you have been in this business for a really long time, and some of you are just establishing your way of working is, when I start training, I know exactly where I am with my time frame. You should start on time and you should end on time. So when you tell them you're going to be done in 45 minutes, you need to be done in 45 minutes. Does that make sense? Otherwise, you're, they're not going to trust the fact that you have everything in order. Okay, so you've got to know it's 10 minutes for seller qu uh, questionnaire. My agenda is only going to take me five minutes and put it together just like you're putting a presentation together like I have. Okay, third is your proposal. All right, these are the solutions. These are the things we're going to be looking at. And a couple of things that I've learned over the years, and I'm bringing them to you so you can um, consider taking this and using them. The five areas of alignment. I want to get into alignment with them about these five things, okay? Number one, I want to get into alignment about the condition of their home, okay? And that goes into something else I call the four Cs. What is the condition of their home? I mean, is this a move-in ready property? Do we need some repairs that need to be done? OMG, does, are, do we, are we with a hoarder? Um, is there a lot of um, clutter that needs to be resolved? Is there painting that needs to be done? You name it, right? Two is going to be the accessibility. In what way is it accessible to the public? Are they going to cooperate is it going to be appointment only? Do we have dogs? Do we have elderly people in the home that we need to be careful of that, you know, can only be certain times in the hour? What is that accessibility, right? Then, of course, comes the marketing. Listing and education documentation on sharing with them everything having to do with the disclosures, the listing, all the things that need to be documented, yes, of course, and how you're going to market the property, okay? How the MLS works, what you're going to do to bring them buyers, right? And then what your buyer delivery system is going to be when buyers come through. What is that? What are you offering buyers? How are you going to do it? Okay, so there's marketing the listing and educating them on how that process happens, and then the buyer delivery system. And then, of course, pricing. So you're going to have to have your time for pricing. And if you have a lot of things to go over, you're going to have to put your timing in line with that. Okay. And then there's compensation. How do you get paid? Are you prepared to share with them the different ways that you get paid? I have three different ways that I get paid. So how do you get paid? Oh, it's just, this is it. I only get paid this way. Okay. Well, I have three different ways. Let me share with you what are those ways and how I'm compensated because people always want to touch discounts. Well, if you want a discount, this is the way I do it when it's a discount. And I'll show you what you get when you want this price. Okay. So I'm not going to go into that today. That's a little different um, area, but I'm going to touch a little bit on um, just getting this going. Okay. The fourth one, and I'm sorry if you can't read this too, too well. It's kind of small. Uh, let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go, that's better, right? Okay, so the agenda of the meeting, right? The fourth one is to review your business system, okay? You're reviewing your system. How do you work? How do you negotiate? In what way do you serve them? Because you have a fiduciary responsibility to them, right? So now you shine and share your negotiating skills. Are you a negotiator? Tell me how you're gonna negotiate for me to get me my price. There are some people, tell me you haven't met someone that is pretty astute 
And they would really, they sit back, they've got poker face, tell me about how you work, Tanya. How are you gonna negotiate for me, Adela? All right, Simon, what you got up your sleeve? You see what I mean? So you do need to review your way of working, your business system. And you also need to share with them your 30, 60, and 90 day mark on how you're gonna communicate with them, how you're going to um, preview and review what's going on in the marketplace, what's happening with pricing, how you're gonna change up anything, because things don't always, properties don't always sell, like I said, in the two week mark. When markets shift, you shift your business system. I've, I've had to shift now that I got myself back in the business again. And, and I've always been in and out of the business and as, as a coach, trainer, and managing broker and running big offices and so forth. But they're not selling in two weeks anymore. Some of them are, but it depends on the location. It depends on condition. So I've got to know what I'm doing. And they need to know that you have a plan, okay? Fifth then comes the home tour. So notice how I'm moving the home tour a little bit later in the listing presentation. And that's when it's applicable. Sometimes, I mean, I've done listing presentations on Zoom where we're not looking at the property. So then there you shaved off 15 minutes right there, okay? If you can actually go tour the home before you go out on the listing presentation, bravo. OK, that to me is a tremendous opportunity to shave off 15 to 20 minutes. And I like to be able to share with sellers. Listen, I'm really excited to be able to come and it, it's going to take me a day that, or and a half, maybe two days to fully come prepared with your market analysis as I preview what's going on in the marketplace and share that with you to help you get a suggested price to help shave off maybe 15 to 20 minutes of that presentation, would you allow me to come over and take a look at your home, preview it, get a taste of what those amenities are, what the um, upgrades that you've done, any special touches that you've done to, home, done to the home. That way what I can do is now make any adjustments to what I learn about the marketplace and the comparables making sure that I bring you a more accurate value. Now, I have never had a seller tell me no. So why is it that we don't do that? We think we're just gonna show up and kind of like do this long drawn out presentation for an hour and 30 minutes and 45 minutes and they're trying to swallow it all and take it in also. So your pre-listing package can be dropping something off ahead of time, but personally asking them for a 15 minute tour. And that right there is golden. It's golden. I give you my word that you will get more listings and more sellers appreciating that you're going to take the time to do that and not just show up and give them everything. So they only need 15 minutes and I'm, I'm there to hear and see upgrades, special touches, anything you want to share with me that can help me in uh, coming up with the correct pricing that I want to be able to offer to you when I see you on Saturday. Okay, so anybody with me on that? Anybody ever done that before? It, it'll shave off 15, 20 minutes of your presentation, guaranteed. So now features and benefits of the home from their perspective is important because they're going to tell you that this is an amazing backsplash on my kitchen that I spent 20 hours on. And you know, it's not true, but they want, you know, this kitchen's just amazing. And you're going, Okay, it's, it's, it's good, it's fair, it's comparable to what's out there and maybe it's not all that great from your opinion, okay? But there is an art and a science to be able to look at all the features and benefits of a home because you're gonna wanna be able to bring that out to the marketplace so for a buyer to actually get excited about it, okay? So home tour, see if you can do that ahead of time. Sixth is now the mutual decision. Now you're getting your commitment signed. This is where um, everything that you've shared about your marketing, how you work, should get them to say, yes, I agree. Okay, so I know I, I changed a little bit of my layout. And when I changed my layout, it moved my font. So I apologize for that. And I know you cannot read what's there at the bottom. It says, which marketing and advertising company um, is going to help them? You, you are the marketing and advertising company. You have just displayed and shared with them everything that you do to market properties to bring them buyers. 
how you're going to advertise in what way in the 21st century that you are innovatively getting their home out into the world for the right buyer. Okay. You are their advertising company. Now, these are the agreeable terms together. This is the win-win for both parties. And now you're going to ask them, are you ready to list with me tonight? Now that you've seen everything that I've offered to you, do you agree that I am the right marketing and advertising real estate negotiator to get your home sold? See, I want to ask them up front. The more yeses I get throughout the conversation and the consultation, the, the quicker and easier it's going to be for them to say yes to me. Okay. That's the quickest way is to keep asking. Now they have questions and you're there to give them answers, right? So you can say to them, so with your permission, I believe you may have some questions such as, okay, how much will your home sell for? How long is it going to take to sell? how we, my company and myself, market and advertise your home and how I'm different than anyone else. Now I'm bringing to you some of these questions and the way we're gonna bring in this agenda and consultation. Does that make sense? So you need to know what your questions are and you want to be scripted. You want it to be as every time you go in, you're on stage and you are playing your part so that you don't skip a beat on what your objective is. Your objective is you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. So what are those questions that you're going to ask? Now, some of you may already have, I have my questions, I have the way I go about it. And I'm, I'm really good at this MJ and this is great. I'm glad that I can take a few of these. And some of you may be honest with yourself and I love it when you're brutally honest with me because I'm always gonna be brutally honest with you. How many of you can literally say to me right now, MJ, when I go in, I don't always say the same thing. Anybody want to admit that? True. I admit it. <laughs> Thank you. Confession time. So anybody else want to confess? It's not always the same. We, we need to work on our, our part. So that the more consistent we are, hi, Tian, the more consistent we are, we're going to see our listing presentation will rock so hard that they have no reason but to say yes. That's, that's what being a closer is. And they need to see that salesperson in you as well. You're an entrepreneur selling yourself and your plan, okay? So they have questions. You need to give them the answers that they have. Make sense? So now you get into your seller questionnaire. You're clarifying some of your pre-listing questions that you already asked them on the phone when you confirm the appointment and or you went out, like I had said, and did your pre-tour, okay? So you've got to ask great questions and you've got to learn about what matters most to them. Is it all about price? Is it all about the net? Is it about the timing? Is it about making sure that grandma's not too bothered every time people come over? Is it all about, I don't want people walking on my floors with this amazing floor that I have. I mean, it, it's the little tiny things. Uh, what matters most to them? I need you to bring me bars. I want open houses every single weekend. You better ask. Because if you don't do open houses, you're partnering with somebody who's going to appease them in that way. Asking great questions, okay? You've got to also be a great listener. I've talked about this in many of my classes. That's key. What are they telling you? And if you miss it, you're going to miss the mark when you're getting ready to ask them to sign. So a great listener, that's the key to a short presentation. You can make a short presentation and get to where you want to go super quick to get them to say yes to you if you're listening. Just nail it, just go straight to what matters the most. Don't take them through 35 slides. Don't take them through an hour and 45 minutes and not get a signed listing. If they're telling you this is where I am and they're very driver, driver and dominant and they're get, just get to the point, then get to the point, get to the point. Still go through your agenda and tell them that I still want to share with you how I market, what my delivery system is and how I work and how I get paid. And if you'll allow me that opportunity, I'm going to be hearing what you have to say and I'm going to get you what you want. That's why you have to give them the answers that they need and listen. Listen for trigger points. What are the trigger points? Now, when I say listen, it means you're taking notes. 
Okay, this is my thing. It's green, so you can't see it. But you are taking notes. You better be taking notes when you're on a listing presentation. Shame on you if you're not taking notes on a listing presentation. It is not all about you. It is about what they need. And you are their solution. So if you're listening and you're taking notes to these trigger points, you'll be able to get to where you want to go in your presentation quickly. And you can address that particular area instead of all those areas. If they're going to be poker faced, what do you got? Then you might have to go through the whole thing. So now your agenda becomes very important and your objective to say to them, I will be with you for 45 minutes. And then you go through what we just talked about. Okay. But if they're telling you exactly what they want, I have a, we have a listing right now for, for a gentleman. It's uh, let's see, it's 1.3 million and change. Okay. million three forty eight, And we were listed higher. And my point in sharing to you just this fact is when we took this listing, he was so to the point, it was ridiculous. I don't want to hear it. I don't care. Now he was an expired. So we got a listing off of an expired. Um, he basically canceled the listing, but it, it was an expired listing. He was disgruntled. He was angry. He was frustrated. You name it. He was done. He thought that all realtors were horrible. Nobody does their job. He doesn't understand why he's going to pay X amount of dollars high and low. No, you guys just don't do anything. And I don't want to hear it. My point is I had to go in there. We had to go in there with a very specific targeted listing presentation, hear what he had to say and get him to say yes. He had already talked to I think three or three or four other listing agents, sellers agents before he spoke to us. And he said, here's what I appreciate. You heard me, you got to the point, but I appreciated that you shared with me what you came to do. And I was willing to listen because of how you presented it. So I'm going to give you 30 minutes because it was how I, I'll give you the 30 minutes. MJ. I'll give it to you. As long as you tell me this is what I want. So again, trigger points. Are you guys with me? Because again, this, this goes around what I call the disc. If you understand the disc profile, you, if you've gone through that training, I've gone through extensive training with a learning personality traits and stuff. You've got to be able to see where that person is so you can get to that um, to your objective quickly. Okay, your marketing proposal. So you're leading with good questions. Our marketing proposal, our agency and my marketing proposal is centered on broadening exposure to maximize price and attract prospective buyers. There's your script. What do you say when you're moving into the marketing proposal? It's time to move into the marketing proposal. What am I going to say? What comes out of my mouth? I'm on stage. I'm in a play. And this is my turn. This is what I say. Transition. So you've got to learn how to transition into your next section of your listing presentation, right? Establish how price is maximized, influenced by condition, sign, and availability. Okay, so marketing proposal. What are your most important goals about the sale of your home? Highest price, shortest amount of time, least amount of inconvenience, anything else? You're, you're going to say those things because you know that those are probably their goals. What else is important to you? And what are your goals about the sale of your home? Your consultation, you're there to hear. Make sense? So you can have these, your slides, your way is for you to be able to have that conversation with them. Okay. Number two, what would your broker have to do in order for you to get the most money for your home? marketing, advertising, right? I'm asking them to tell me what they think. What do you think it's going to take for the broker that you choose to hire in order for them to get the most money for your home? Well, I think they're going to have to do open houses. I think that they're going to have to do Facebook ads. I think that they're going to have to put it in um, Luxury Homes Magazine. Now you're understanding what your expectations are. And are you willing to do that? And how are you going to handle that objection if you don't? Okay, so those are just vehicles to pull in buyers, right? Those are the things. The more buyers that see your home, the more likely you are to maximize the price, right? Okay, but you still want to ask them what they think. And the fewer 
buyers that see your home, the less likely you'll get a higher price and the longer it will take, right? So we're moving into our marketing proposal and we're asking them, what would you think it's going to take? And let them tell you, and you're having this conversation with them. So our lead-in questions, more exposure creates demand. More demand creates a higher price for your home. Would you agree? So if I understand what you're saying, you're going to choose the broker who can prove to you they can get more buyers, correct? Excellent. Okay. So creating buyer anticipation is what we strive for through. And now you're going to put what you do. If I were to ask every single one of you right now, how do you create buyer anticipation? I would hope that you have it dialed down, not only with examples, but just your bullet points. What are your bullet points? I have sneak peek advertising. I build a story around the lifestyle. I create your property into a desirable product. I do a video. Um, I do mega open houses, yada, 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 yada. Okay, because we're supposed to be creating buyer anticipation. How do you create buyer anticipation in the pre-marketing period? In the state of California, we have 21 days before it actually goes active if we so choose to use that pre-marketing time. So what are you going to do in 21 days to create anticipation, MJ? You have a plan? Or you're just going to wait because i got to get this house sold. There's no reason for us to wait 21 days if you don't have some amazing plan that is going to create and build anticipation. Are you guys with me today? Are you good? Because this is, this is where I'm trying to help you understand how listing presentations rock. Here we go. Number three, in your mind, Mr. and Mrs. Pros prospective seller, where do, our, where do all the buyers look for homes? Where do they think that the buyers are coming from? Internet, right? They're going to say the internet. Okay, well, what sites do you use? I use Zillow. I use Redfin. I use Yahoo Homes. Um, I actually use another agent's portal named Mike Smith. Mike Smith uh, sends me his blah, 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 and I've been using that for years. Okay, so now you know that there's another realtor in their world sending them stuff. Has, has, has um, anybody ever sent you or put you on the, the local MLS so that you can preview properties? Right? So, oh, I was just looking at the chat. Oh, can you guys hear my dog? Sometimes my dog barks. Yeah, sorry. She's quiet now. Um, what if they want print, but print doesn't bring buyers? Print. Oh, I see. I see. Um, are you talking about magazines and such? Yeah, I would probably share with them what your success is with bringing in print. Because if you don't have success, be honest with them. You know, be honest with them. Tell, tell them the truth. So, okay. Where do the buyers come from? Ask them that question. Ask them, ask them, ask them. How much does it cost to have a website? 14 bucks. You can go to GoDaddy. You can go to all these other tools. So what would make one company's website more valuable than another? Well, the number of buyers that see it. Now, if you have an amazing website, you put this in your marketing proposal. If you don't, don't talk about it. If your company has an amazing website and it's bringing in a lot of buyers that see it, then you share that because you want to elevate the website that you have. You want to elevate that. Um, I'll just drop some, some names for big brands, Cole Banker, Berkshire Hathaway, um, Remax, Compass, EXP. You see where I'm saying? If they have a website that does all of that, then you bring it up. How do we get that many? Syndications, algorithms, social media presence, all the money that my company is backing to present it in front of realtor.com and on all these other, other places. So in your marketing proposal, talk about your website. Now you want to bring in your information. So this is my company, Chapeau Properties. You're going to bring in your company logo. So for example, you're presenting this digitally or you're presenting it in print format. However, whatever works for you. Thank you for choosing to meet with me, MJ Porches with Chapeau Properties, powered by whoever, whoever you are, Agent Inc. I don't know, a lot, a lot of great companies. And you want to start doing this so that they can see what you've got. You can also have in your slides, maybe a letter from your company, a letter from the president. Anybody have um, a large CEO, a big work for a big company, and you'd love it if your CEO would write, 
something or maybe they have. Maybe you're the broker owner of your own company or you go to your own broker and say, I'd really love it if you, we had a vision and a mission and a proposition that supports giving it back to our clients with your signature on it um, that says who we are as an agency. That's pretty powerful. We had that with many of the companies that I work with. Prudential had one. Berkshire Hathaway has one. Coal Banker has one. Uh, First Team has one. Even some of the other uh, smaller brokerages that I support and coach, they now have one. Okay, so it shows a lot of power. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to show you something before I move on. And let me get out of here. Stop the share. All right, are you guys good? Everybody still with me? Listen, listing presentations, it, it's the same as a buyer consultation in the sense is you are trying to earn someone's trust to say you're the person that's going to do exactly what I need. You solve my problem. But the only way they do you do that is with really understanding people. You, you need to understand people, how they work. We're all really interesting individuals. All right, so let me share my screen. All right. Sorry if you can hear Kiki. She had to go into the laundry room today and she's not happy. Okay, agenda and your questionnaire. All right. So I'm before I would be even be moving into the next part of my slides, and I'm I think I'm going to do that in like a second part, but is where we started out in the beginning. Your agenda and your questionnaire. Your step one, you're reviewing the agenda with the seller and explaining how you plan to proceed. You can use the one in your listing package or you customize your own for your own presentation and you take note of the seller's personality type. So we need to learn to be in alignment with people during consultation because if you're not and you don't have this mastered, you're skipping a step as a salesperson. Uh, this is one way to learn, which is called the DISC. The DISC has been taught in many different formats, but here is the frame of mind. The D stands for a dominant personality. The I stands for an influencing personality. The C stands for a cautious personality. And the S stands for a stabilizing personality. If you understand how the disc works when they're talking to you, you're targeting. I'm talking to a high C right now. Very analytical, very detail-oriented, and very systematic. I need to get to the places that analyze to help answer their questions. If I'm talking to somebody who is get to the point dominant, they're very results oriented, they're driver drivers and they're very competitive, get to the point. I know you wanna tell me what you've got, but I wanna know what your suggested price is and how you're gonna help me get my house sold. How do you negotiate for me? Bring me buyers. If you're talking to somebody who is an influencer, very persuasive, they're very inspiring, they're very enthusiastic, um, they're chatty people, they like to express themselves. Let me show you my house, let me show you this. If you're getting that vibe even on your pre-listing and you're going to go and see them on Saturday, you better show up to their house on Tuesday so you can see it ahead of time and shave off 25 minutes or 30 minutes of them doing this, okay? And then that high S person they're very stable. They're very democratic and patient. They're going to listen to you. They're going to hear what you have to say, um, but they, they like things very democratic in their way. They're going to be patient with you, um, and they may just let you talk for two hours, and you may never get anywhere, okay? So you've got to be able to see where they are and understand who they are as people. Seller, the, uh, session two was what we talked about earlier, that questionnaire. This questionnaire is designed to help you understand their motivation, their challenges, and their concern. But it's also exposing any of the objections that the seller has to listing their home. What is the objective? objection? Is it straight out commission? Is it straight out appointment only? I mean, we're, we struggle quite a bit with the, the listing we have at 1.3 million with appointment only, you have to be at every appointment, booties on, no longer than 15 minutes. I mean, just this is how I want it now because of how we've spoken to him and how we've been able to, to persuade him. We're having an open house this Saturday and it's gonna be big and it's gonna be wild. And now we have more permission to do things. So it's just learning how to work with people. It creates credibility. When you ask questions and you listen, you're creating credibility on yourself. 
you're showing that you're concerned about their needs and their wants. It's also going to give you a better understanding on how to proceed in the next step. Otherwise, you're not going to know what to focus on, whether online marketing is more important or print advertising or open houses, or they expect you to have, you know, I'll say there and sing. Okay. Ah. <laughs> All right. So an agenda sample script. Thank you for inviting me to just, to, thank you for inviting me today to discuss the sale of your property. How much time do I have? You know what? I've only got 20 minutes. I've only got 15 minutes. I've only got 45 minutes. I got to take Johnny to, to, to baseball practice. Okay, now you know. If you had not set that in advance, you better be Johnny on the spot with what you're going to do. Okay, great. Well, we should be able to cover everything in that time. However, if you want me to dive deeper into our systems on, or the market, please feel free to ask and I'll take as much time as needed to answer your questions as we go along. Is that okay? So find out where it's going to be more important for them. Here's the agenda and how I plan to proceed today. And please let me know if this works for you. Notice how, how I have to stop and make sure that's not going to work for me. MJ didn't realize it. Then shame on us for not preparing them ahead of time for the meeting on Saturday. But if you don't get to do pre-listing and they know that it's going to take this time, let them know how you plan on proceeding. I would like to conduct a consultation with you. I'm going to complete what I call my seller's questionnaire. I've got some questions I want to ask you. And the purpose of the consultation is for me to understand and clarify with you and your household, your family's goals, how I can provide you the best service. Would that be okay? Uh, sure, of course, MJ. That would be wonderful. Okay. So now we move into the questionnaire. Now, before we go into the home tour, let me... I think I need to stop my share so you guys can see this. If not, it won't let you see it. Okay, here we go. Everybody should have their own. If you don't, I'm happy to give it to you. Not a big deal. It's not rocket science, right? It's not rocket science at all. The point is, is do you have one and are you using it? Okay, I was uh, unable to get it on my PDF download. So this is an Acrobat right now. All right, so you've got your prospecting seller questionnaire. And you're, you're gonna be asking them these questions as you go through and you can go quickly when you get to your trigger points, but you are gonna be making sure that things are in line, okay? So where are you moving to? How soon do you have to be there? May I ask, have you chosen uh, to move now? Or you know when? How does the rest of your family feel about this move? Yeah, Bob's not too happy about it, but we have to do it and he's resisting. Find out. Who in the family is maybe not happy about this? The kids are not happy, you know, whatever. Is there a moving deadline which you would like uh, to meet? I spelled which wrong. Shame on me. How would your plans be affected if you move earlier or later? If we sold your home within the next 30 days, would that be a problem for you? What would, what would happen if your home did not sell? What's going to happen if it doesn't sell? Just going to be mad at me? Are you going to stay? Not all properties sell in the time frame, if especially it's in a time frame where perhaps maybe the market's not moving or they're not working with you on price. So what's going to happen if it doesn't sell? Especially if they say they're only going to give you a 60-day listing. And you need to have your decision on how long you take listings for. If you're like, I don't take listings for less than 90 days, then you need to be keen on how you work. How much do you want to list your home realistically? MJ, you're going to ask them up, up front before you even give them? Absolutely. They're already having their mind. Get to that section. I want 1.5 million. And if she comes in with any less, anything less than 1.5 million, we're not listing. Right, Peggy? They have it in their mind already what they want to list it for. So ask, ask them. How did you arrive at that price? Guy down the street, property sold over here. This is what I think my house has. It's amazing. It's the Taj Mahal. It's, it's you know, the castle. How'd they come up with that price? Zillow? As professional agents, we study homes and prices every day. That's my job. So therefore, I assume you're going to list with me at a price that will allow your property to sell, correct? So what is the price you will not go below? 
Oh my gosh. Okay. So MJ, these questions are something I've never a little bit aggressive. It's really not my style. You can choose to use it or not use it. The point is, is that I'm not going to 1.5 million. Excellent. Is doing. Where are they in their place? Depending on their disc profile will depend on what questions you ask. These are sample questions. There are a gazillion questions you can ask. Okay. What is the most important service uh, that a real estate agent should be able to provide for a seller? What is the most important service that they're expecting? I expect them to do this. I expect you to do X. What's their expectation? Why is it that you expect, uh, what is it that you expect of us before you would decide to hire us tonight? I expect X. Oh, MJ, I don't know if I want to ask those questions. When we beat around the bush, it's like the elephant that's in the room. And I've learned over time, and this is confidence. This is where we were talking about earlier before we got started. This business isn't for whims. You need to be a risk taker. You need to be bold. You need to have courage to go in there and say, this is how I work. I have a question for you. You can be subtle in how you ask it and you can have the way that you go about it, but you do need to be, be bold with them, okay? And ask the questions that you need to know. Um, I've only spoken with you. Will all the decision makers be here? Um, do you want us to sell, tell you the truth about the market or quote a price that will persuade, persuade you to list with us? Oh, okay, that's bold. So here, here's the thing is, you know, I've come fully prepared with a market analysis to share with you. And I know that we're gonna be taking a look at the home after we get through this marketing proposal and I share this with you. But I, I do want you to know that we're here to tell you the truth about the market. Um, I don't want you to think that we're just gonna quote you a price that's gonna persuade you to list with us. Does that sound fair? Do you see my point? My point is to let them know those things. On, on what will you base your listing decision? Service and marketing or listing price? Um, I remember we asked Mr. Nicholson this question because it's in my wheelhouse to ask. And he said, I thought it was listing price when I listed with the previous uh, agent. I was very displeased. You know, he gave me the price that I wanted because his service and marketing was awful. So I got an answer, okay? It wasn't all just about listing price. It was about the service and how it was gonna be marketed. If what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that we can sell your home, meaning if I sold your house at the price that you want in the time frame you want and you get the money you want and you're relieved of any home selling stress, would you sign a contract with me tonight? Yes or no? Wow, so we're asking these questions up front? Absolutely, why not? So when we go in with this apprehension, I have learned over time, you get apprehension because there's this, well, you know, okay, well, we're gonna think about it, we're gonna pray about it. I don't make decisions overnight. Um, yeah, we need some time to think about it, you know, all of that stuff. Just get to it. You can also ask those types of questions in your pre-listing consultation as well. Excited about going to work for you. Are, are you ready to get it on the market? Uh, great. So is tomorrow at 5 p.m. a good time to meet you at your home? Notice that these are our seller questionnaires, pre-listing consultation questionnaires that we are asking before we go out. Why not ask? So just so you know, our meeting should only take 15 to 30 minutes. Is that okay with you? It's going to take 30 to 45 minutes. If you tell them it's going to take an hour and 10 minutes to an hour and a half, up front, then I think they're probably gonna be like, whoa, really, how long does it take? You can say, it'll probably take 30 to 45 minutes depending on the questions that you have and I do want to take a look at your home unless you can allow me to go see it beforehand. And that'll shave off about 15 to 20 minutes, okay? And remember our team uh, doesn't offer just services, we offer results. What's your Motto, what's your slogan? What do you want to say? This is the questionnaire and conversation that you're having on the phone before you take that listing, okay? Always ask for referrals. By the way, all of your friends, family, um, whoever's thinking of buying or selling, um, you currently may be talking to other people about selling your home and that you're interviewing agents. Um, I would be more than happy to be able to speak to them. Okay, now I'm going to stop the share here for a second. Listen, 
there are so many different ways to talk about how to do a listing presentation. I still have tons of other slides to share, but I'm gonna stop because if I were to continue and continue and continue, which I know that I think I'm gonna to need to continue on the, next, on the next point, is we're not gonna to get to the place where you're moving into talking about the marketplace and talking about your listing or your marketing proposal and how you work. And that's deeper. Wouldn't you agree? That's much deeper. A listing presentation that rocks starts out on the front with confidence, asking great questions, setting up your agenda, knowing what your time frame is, and being able to move into a place where you can handle objections and be the solution. I, I was hoping she was going to say that. I was hoping that you were going to tell me that. That's what I was hoping for. So good. I will give you all the time allotted that you need because I do want to hear your marketing proposal. I do want to hear how you bring buyers. I do want to hear your innovative ways to get it out into social media. I do want to hear your success stories and your testimonials. I do want to know what your plan is if it doesn't sell in 45 days because it's taking 65 days to sell in this area. I do want to know what you do for luxury homes because this is a $4 million property and I don't expect it to sell in 30 days. So what's your plan? So a listing presentation that rocks starts out with structure, a great agenda, an amazing consultation, and being in alignment with them regarding those five areas of alignment that we talked about, okay? And in those five areas of alignment, which I realize this is such a, a, a longer class in the sense of bringing you everything that I would really like to bring, but those five areas of alignment are the condition of the property, the accessibility, the marketing and how it's gonna be marketed, how well it's gonna be priced, but you gotta be in alignment on how you're gonna get paid. Because if you're not getting paid what you know you should be paid, the expectation of all that you're going to give, there's no win-win in agreement. Does that make sense? There's just no win-win. Nobody feels good about it, right? Okay, so I'm going to stop right here, even though I have a lot more slides to share. I'm just going to end here. Does anybody have any questions, anything they want to share about or coaching that they want on their listing presentation? Anything that, the, that you want to share, Chiyan, anything? Peggy? I think the commission probably is, I think more of the objection is the market is still strong. It's still on the seller side. So there's a lot of confusion regarding some sellers are looking at the bad news. And then some people are still looking at things going really quickly. So they try to get a discount. I think that's probably where I, I always get. You know, I stand, I stand and ask for, you know, I demand 6%, right? And I have to cut from there. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's still still a sales market and they feel very confident that they could go elsewhere, right? To, to get Play. a discount? And still, still sell the house. Yeah, and to get a discount is what you're saying? Yeah, discount. Yeah. To get a discount. Yeah, and that, that, that piece of the agenda is really important because when you're explaining how you bring buyers and everything that you do, it should be no question about what you're worth. So it's, it's your value and your worth. And when we're explaining what we do, it needs to be at such a high level that they, that they realize I want all of that. And when I was explaining earlier that I have three ways of getting paid is I give them, it's, it's either going to go for the gold package you want the platinum package, right? You, you want the premier pack, then it costs this. And if you don't want that, then you can have this package. And if you want, don't want those things, then you can have this package. So I won't do those things. So I'm willing to do less for you and you can pay me X. It just means that you don't get this and you don't get this and you don't get this. They have to know what it is that you do for all of that. Also, would you like me to, I'll, I'll just go ahead and take away the advertisements that I do here, the Facebook ads that I do here, the, um, the marketing video tour that I do, I spend money, uh, the staging that I do. Does that make sense? Because then now I'm saying, this is what I do for six and a half percent. Because my piece is three and a half. So my performance fee 
to perform all of the marketing that I do and everything that I'm bringing to the table to bring buyers your way is three and a half percent. What I offer to a buyer's agent that brings qualified buyers, and we'll just call that that finder's fee, I believe that in this marketplace, we should give them 3%. So my performance fee is 3.5% for everything that I just shared with you at the table. Now, if you'd like for me to take away X, X, and X, I can do that for 3%. So I always go higher, Chi. I always go higher and then I go, I can do that for 3%. And then I can do the next one. I can do that one for 2.75% on my performance fee. Which one would you like to choose? Either way, I'm still going to bring you buyers. That sounds good. <laughs> it's, it's one opportunity, right? It's one way of, of, of looking at it and go a little bit higher and, and, and tell them that whether it's this market or the market in five years, it's about what you bring. So they need to have that expectation of everything that you shared with them that it costs money. Can I do this all up front? So you're not paying me anything at all until I sell your home. So I have to continue to work in a marketplace that's going to be 45 days out or 60 days out to get your home sold. In your marketplace, how long is it taking to get home sold? Probably in a week, right? In a week, the closing's 30 days or less. Wow. Right? You're, so you're still in still. a week. Yeah, what area are you in? So I'm in I'm in the Howard County. I'm basically in the suburbs of um, of DC. Okay. So it's like so it's one of those desirable school things, right? There's like three counties over here in Virginia, and then there's Maryland. This wow. is one of the counties there, number one. So we've always been busy. It's always competitive, even in the like it's busy when it was busier during COVID, and it's still busy. Wow. Well, that, well, that's great. So now I hear what you're saying because of your marketplace. They feel, a, a seller feels it's going to sell. So why should I have to pay you X amount of dollars when I know it's going to sell in a week, whether I hire you or him or her or whatever, this home's just going to sell because there's no inventory or because of the area. But the whole point is, is you're, you're hiring me for all of my negotiation skills, for my reputation of protection protecting you, how I educate you and how I make sure that I bring a meeting of the minds with you and that buyer's agent. That in itself is my X amount of years of experience. How long have you been doing this, Chian? Um, eight. Yeah, that's eight. That's eight years of experience. 18? Eight. Eight. Yeah. Eight, eight experience. Yeah. How many homes sold? Probably uh, over 150. Okay. So that right there it was one of my slides that I had, and um, I'm just going to bring it up. Of course, you yeah, I think I missed the first part because I'm in Maryland, so oh, okay. <laughs> by the time I get to notice. <laughs> no worries. No. 11 o'clock every Tuesday. So let, let me just show with you something um, in, in, res in response to what you're saying and just kind of give it to everyone here. You, you need to have your stats, right? Who are you? What have you sold? What has your company sold? That right there, that's the credibility. So here's my sales volume. I am a sales agent. I get properties sold through the marketing that I just shared with you, through my negotiation skills, through the networking that I have within other buyers, agents in my community. We talk, we talk and we, I've got a listing over here. I've got a listing over here. Call me, call me, call me. Right. So that in itself should never get you less when it comes to the commission, because now I'm backing it up. If you're newer in the business for anybody who's watching and is newer and saying, I'm just getting back on the bandwagon, I'm just getting started again. Uh, talk about your experience in the past. Um, uh, Adela, Adela and, and I have been um, colleagues in the past and we're both getting our, our jump start again. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of homes, but I'm starting again. So for those of you who already have sales volume and closed transactions, put it. If not, use your company. Because there in itself is like, oh, that's what I'm paying for. I'm paying for somebody who gets home sold. So now the credibility is behind the track record. Give them the track record of your company or of your team or of yourself. That in itself is gold. It, it just is. It just is. So what was my next slide? Um, Oh, my next slide, now that I'm talking that I should end, is how you move them forward. And 
do you have past clients and do you have testimonials and do you have a percentage that you can say of people that keep coming back to you and keep referring you? That right there, that's also gold. This is what you're paying me for. See, people, people want to work with me. People refer me. 88% of my clients are repeat clients and referrals because they know that I get the job done. So this is who you're hiring. Not only are you hiring my marketing way of doing things, you're hiring a negotiator, a skilled salesperson, networked in the area with a reputation of pricing properties well and getting them sold and getting them closed. That's who you're hiring. So the more you have on your slides, your slides could just be 10, 15 slides. They don't have to be a lot, but you should have something put together. So I have one that's called listed to sold. We move you forward. And let me tell you how. And I'm very proud of that. I never got past 80. I always thought it was 86 to 88%. And my husband had corrected me. He's like, we were at 88% uh, repeat clients year over year and referral business. That's huge. And that takes time to get there. So where is yours, right? And if, and if you don't have that percentage, use your testimonials of, of people. You just have to have that level of confidence in a slide to be able to speak to that. This is the reason why my performance fee is three and a half percent. And I've always used performance fee versus commission because I am performing to get the job done. And it's been better language or better verbiage, if you will, than to say commission. Uh, because I'm performing every day, day in and day out to get your home sold, to advertise it and to make sure everybody knows about it. So I hope that helped. It does. Now, I think because I moved to a new company, but I, I, well, I basically joined a bigger company and I'm starting my team. And I was wondering like, how am I gonna update my listing? They have a listing template, but I was thinking like there's something missing that's making, that's not me. And it's just company generated. So now you gave me kind of ideas of what I could do. Thank you so much. Cause I was kind of like drawing blank. It hasn't been, because most of my business have been, I guess, referral and repeat business last year, especially last year. Yeah. You know, I didn't, didn't really have to do a listing presentation, but now it's, it's getting back to, okay, I'm going to have to go and actually compete. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. do that again. Right. I agree. I agree. Because, yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Um, even with when we have friends and family, we feel like we don't have to do uh, a big listing presentation. You should always have it put together. Um, but I know I'm going to end up doing this again because I have the complete slides to be able to, to have you guys look at them and say, that's a slide. I like that one. I'm going to use that one. And, and you don't need a lot of them. You just need to know what goes where and what at what point you say this and at what point you put in that slide. And this is my slide. This is when I do this. This is when I do this and I'm done. Right. And this is me. Um, and Adela, I, I, I agree with you. It's going back and getting client testimonials, having them on your slides, updating these testimonials, if they're not willing to do videos with you and do all of that, that's not everybody's style, by the way, to be doing TikToks and pictures and whatever. That's not for everybody. It's really not. So do you have something that maybe allows a picture of them that you can put up and then a handwritten testimonial? I have an old, old, old school. Uh, maybe I'll show it to all of you where we would literally open up a portfolio and flip open the letters that we would receive and the cards that we received and the thank yous and all of that. And that would move people to go, wow, that's really cool. It will be page after page after page after page. And then I'd say, here is a list of all of these people. You're welcome to call them, text them, send them an email. They, are re they will gladly tell you about my service. So do you have that list of references? You're interviewing for a job. Where's your list of references? Have your top 10, your top five, whoever it is, right? Because that's the, the best thing to do. Yep, yep. Anyone else want to share or have a question before we go for a coaching? Let's see, what were you asking me, my dear? Can you please share your seller questionnaire? Yes, that's going to go up on Facebook. It goes into the files section. So I usually upload it and then it'll be saved under the files area. Um, yeah, and it is the easiest way to remember so you don't miss anything. Slideshows work. It, it's just, it's for you. And so when I got that presentation, it's really cool, by the way. Um, we, we put the, the, the 
the monitor, little tiny square monitor. We put it in front of them at the kitchen table or wherever we are. I've got my laptop, they're watching the slides and my presentation slides are telling me what to say. They don't see that, they only see the presentation. And now you're innovative and you, you're prepared and it looks good. And you ask your seller questionnaire questions are there and maybe that slide only says seller questionnaires for them, but you have yours right in front of you. You can ask questions, you can talk to them. And remember, take notes. If you're not taking notes, it means you don't care and you're not listening. So you've got to, you've got to take notes um, and find out where the trigger points are because you can move them right to the slide that you want to. Okay. I love that, MJ. That really like, I feel like that alone initially starts off with, wow, she's different than other people we've talked to. And I always love coming to your coaching sessions and taking everything that you're sharing with us and implementing that into my own way of doing things because you always bring such great information to us. So thank you so much for you're doing welcome. what you're doing. You're welcome, Peggy. I, that's my goal. My goal is to bring you value so you can take it to the next level of where you want to go. Right, because everyone has yeah. a different way of working, but you take an idea and you go, "Hey, that's it. That's for me. Uh, that works for me." Or we get the slap on the hand and go, "I'm not doing what I need to be doing, and I need to up my game." Right? Um, mm -hmm. I think Adela asked me to repeat. Um, oh, how you have your scripts that they can't see? Okay, so if you are using Google Slides like I'm, I'm using now, so for example, I can see my presentation and. I can read exactly what I'm gonna to say to all of you, and yet you only see something else. And, and that's using Google Slides. So don't know how to explain it other than I, I put up my slide and then I'll have a slide and it'll tell me what to say. And then I can click on the slide that I want next where they don't have to see that slide. Does that make sense? So I have a slide up, you can see it, but my next slide is actually my seller questionnaire. So when I want you to see the next slide, I just don't click on seller questionnaire. I'm looking at it and reading it at large and they're looking at a different slide. Does that make sense? I hope. <laughs> so it's not, it's not that it's hard. I think you just kind of need to do it so that you can see it, right? So, um, and no, I can do it on Zoom and I can do it live in person. Now, live in person is when you have that little, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the monitor. So I love it because my husband and I, we will come up and where are we going to sit? I'm so excited. I've got a really great presentation for you. You know, obviously we're building rapport and, you know, may I have a glass of water? I always ask for a glass of water, always ask for a glass of water. You need them to give you a glass of water. So that way, when you ask questions, and you need to give them an opportunity to think and answer the question so you're not talking over them, you take a sip of water when you're handling an objection and you tell them what you want to tell them, you take a sip of water. You, it gives them an opportunity to just think about it. You're going to need some water. What if you cough? What if you this? But it ask them to give you a glass of water. Don't bring in your own water. Have a water for yourself just in case they have no water and they have no glasses or cups. But it's really important to ask for a glass of water. And there's a lot of psychology behind asking them for a glass of water. So you have to give people an opportunity to answer a question. And when you're ready and already thinking about what you're going to say, you're blowing the moment. Let them self-discover and they might just tell you something that you needed to hear that you weren't giving them time to say and now the penny drops. Does that make sense? So I have learned, may we have a glass of water, please? Absolutely. Would you like tea? Would you, you know what? I'll take a glass of water first and then maybe tea later or maybe something later. Never have alcohol, never drink anything that's alcoholic. Don't do that at a client at, at the beginning of it. Don't ever do that. It's just not a good place to, to go. Okay. But it does give you an opportunity to handle an objection and give them a moment so you can either think through how you're gonna answer that question as well before you talk over them, okay? So always ask for a glass of water. And it also kind of helps you see what kind of hospitality they're gonna give you, how they cooperate, how they interact with you. It's helping you identify their disc profile in many different ways. So you have to learn how to um, 
identify disc profiles in how you ask certain questions. Okay, so I believe I'm going to end up doing second part to this because there's a lot and I have all of the slides that I can give you. So then you're using those slides going, okay, that's what I could do for that slide. I'll just make it my own. That's a great, you know, segue or that's a great, um, I like that one. That one says listed to sold, we move you forward. That's not copywritten. That's not rocket science. And that's not something you're stealing from anybody. I've used it for years. Take it. I don't care. I want you guys to excel. And I want you to have a listing presentation that you're confident with, that you can move forward with, that you can knock out of the part in 30 minutes. The last 15 minutes should be you getting it signed. You shouldn't be in their house for two hours. Get rid of that baloney. That's craziness. Okay. If you're establishing rapport and you're signing and all of that, then great. Okay. If they're signing and they're offering you blah, 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 go for it. You know, or they're offering you some dim sum, go for it. I've had dim sum with people right there. We're signing documents. Awesome. Whatever. But get through it. Know that you have a structure and a way to get them to say yes to you within 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. Anyone else? All good. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I know I had some, some thank yous earlier. I hope this benefited you greatly. We will do maybe a second part so I can show all the slides. God bless you. And we will see you next Tuesday. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, MJ. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.